What's up guys, we're going bourbon hunting in Baltimore, Maryland today. Got myself, my good buddy Taylor. Let's see what we find. All right, our first stop is Drug City, probably my favorite liquor store in Baltimore. Let's see what they got today. So one of the nice things about Drug City is they have a ton of store picks. You need to run down and get this today. It is the Knob Creek Single Barrel. It comes in at 11 years. I have not seen an 11 year single barrel in quite some time. They also got a couple Woodford Double Oaks. I've heard Woodford Double Oaks store picks are some of the best buys out there. If you ever see this Bare Knuckle KO High Rye Bourbon, it's a distillery in Virginia, but the juice in this bottle is MGP juice, but this bottle is worth the price. If you ever see one, definitely pick it up. Some more of this 15 year old American whiskey from Bull Run. Here's a peerless pick I'm hearing a lot about. It's a collaboration with a couple different uh, liquor stores slash bars. I was able to try it. Uh, it's good for a rye. If you like rides, it's a good rye. I'm just not a big rye person myself. And then I, I have never seen this before on a maker's pick. It's question marks across all the state profiles. I, I, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't even know what to say. Um, if anyone knows anything about this bottle, let me know. And I almost bought this bottle just for the sticker. Uh, it cracked me up. But I, I know nothing about this company. Um, so it was hard to make the plunge. This is a very cool item. A little expensive for myself, but uh, a collection of 14-year-old whiskeys. I think it's a throwback to some of the Maryland distilleries back in the day. Here's some of the new Rift bottles I know people are chasing. The Balboa Rye, the Malted Rye. So this is their Scotch section, but look what's hiding up here in the corner. A little book. Uh, let's see what year it is. I think it's 2021. Yep, yep, it's the 2021. I don't know why this is still here. Um, maybe they just found it at the warehouse, but it was a cool find today. Jefferson's Tropics, that's a new one that come out. I know some people have said some good things about it, but I just, I've been burned by Jefferson's too much to give it a shot. This Hirsch caught my eye. Uh, it's seven and a half year cast strength, but for the price tag, I, it was hard for me to justify it. But if any of you have had it and it's worth it, let me know. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'm a small channel trying to get to a thousand, so hopefully we can do a live stream with you, bring on my pup Watson, and just have a good time with everybody. Oh, and there's Artbeg. This might be one of the first international whiskeys I actually end up buying. I know they make cast strength whiskeys, which I think will be right up my alley. A 
Let me know in the comments which of these bottles you would buy. There is absolutely decision paralysis. There are more bottles here than you could drink in a lifetime. Now this is a unique bottle I haven't seen before. Some Masonic symbol. Uh, wonder how good it is. Drug City has some of the best selection along with the best pricing in Baltimore. If you can only make one stop while you're visiting, this is the place to go. Always in the hunt for slam dunks, but didn't see any today. Oh, there's a bottle with a wax cap. The Tater and me almost bought it just for that alone. Here's the new 2XO American Oak. The price alone caught my eye. I know the last couple of 2XOs were around $100, so this one being at $50 seems like a deal. They aren't very transparent though with their specs, so it's hard to know if it's a value. So here's a bottle from DC itself, District Made. I saw a hazmat one at Total Wine. They're a little grainy and youthy. Um, they're a fairly young distillery, but it'll be exciting to see what they can put out in the future. Well, if anyone is hunting the new Wild Turkey Rare Breed logo, it is here at Drug City. Let me know in the comments if you like the old logo or the new logo better. They have one of the more impressive Sagamore Ride collections I've seen in Baltimore.
Here's a bottle from Rye 3. That's another Virginia brand down in Virginia Beach. I think the blender at Rye 3 actually is the former blender at Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. If any of you guys have had it, if you think it's worth a pickup, let me know. And up here up top, you got a Widow Jane 14 year hiding. I haven't been too impressed with any of the Widow Jane, so it's another bottle that it's hard for me to spend up on. And then one of the main reasons I make the drive out to Drug City is for the restaurant called The Fountain. I am absolutely in love with this place. Always get lunch each time I come up. One of the cool things about the fountain is they make handmade soda right in front of you, mixing the syrup with the carbonated water. Absolutely fantastic. And then the main reason to come here, obviously, is the bourbon selection. They have some of the best pricing. Their pricing is for an ounce and a half ounce for some of their more allocated products. But to be honest, a half ounce is all I really want for some of these high-end products. I just want to taste just to see what it's like and this bottle I should chase. Making a decision was absolutely impossible. Let me know in the comments what you guys would have picked from the selection. And then hiding down here on the bottom shelf was an old school pirate bottle, Elijah Craig. Unfortunately, it wasn't open for tasting today, but man, I would have loved to try that. My buddy went with the new Wild Turkey Voyage and an old school maker's finishing bottle. I ended up deciding to go with the two Willet Purple Tops. and Old Carter Batch 11 and 12. I was able to try their Peerless Rye Store Pick. I'm not personally a rye fan, but if you are a rye lover, I think this one would be good for you. Next up on our list, we went to Speedy Liquors up in North Baltimore. Let's see what they got. They keep a lot of their higher end bottles and allocated bottles behind the glass. They had a couple BTAC bottles, but I just could not pay a thousand or two thousand dollars for them. Here's a closer look at some of their allocated products. They got the Elijah Craig Toasted, the Barrel Proof, Henry McKenna, a lot of the Bardstown, some Garrison Brothers, and then, but down here in the corner, it caught my eye hiding was the JD10. Almost bought it, but they are asking 200, which I just can't do.
down here hiding among the bottles on the bottom shelf was an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof from C922. I have one at home so I didn't grab it, but it's here hiding if anyone wants to come grab it. Looks like this store also has the new Wild Turkey label, so it sounds like they're popping around Maryland now. I haven't bought a Peerless yet, but it's just difficult for me to justify spending $100 on it when it's not that old. And then sadly, once again, no Baker Slim Dunks. And I have to say, this is probably one of the more impressive Traverse City selections I've seen outside of Michigan. Okay, that's a recap of mine and Taylor's trip to Speedy's and Drug City in Baltimore, Maryland. I cannot recommend enough. If you're traveling through Baltimore, make sure you stop at Drug City. They have the most store picks I've seen at any store in Baltimore. In addition, their selection and pricing is just absolutely unbeatable. If you stop at Drug City, make sure you hit the fountain. Great place to grab lunch. In addition, the owner's constantly switching out the bar pours they have at the bar there. So each time you go, there'll be something slightly different. And a lot of times you pull stuff out that was made several years ago. So if you get lucky, you might find a pour that you just can't find anywhere else. So on our trip, we did hit two other liquor stores, but the video is getting a little long. So stay tuned for part two. But before you leave, check out this video or this video. And until next time, cheers.